Hello everyone! Just a few minutes ago, episode 71 came out, and it was much shorter than the previous episode, but it doesn't mean at all that it was less interesting. Today, I will analyze all the secrets and easter eggs that I managed to find in here, and I can guarantee that you didn't notice those yourselves. Now get your tea and snacks ready, and prepare to watch this video to the end, because I saved the juiciest part for later. As always, let's go! The episode starts with one of the POV holding the tablet, where we can notice the same door that we saw at the beginning of the third part of episode 70. It is the same door Plungerman and the Dark Speakerman entered, but there's something interesting about it. On the tablet, we see how the door opens, not closes, but there's no one coming inside, on the contrary. There's the silhouette of the dark, skibidi soldier who is ready to come out. So, we can understand how the events of Episode 71 are happening a few minutes prior to the events of the third part of Episode 70, when Plunger Man and his bro Dark Speaker Man were just about to enter the room where Skibidi Scientist had been hiding in. And as this moment was before Plunger Man reached the door, and when both Plunger Man and the Dark Speaker Man were still in the invisibility mode casted by one of the green-suited brothers on them, that's why they were not present in this tablet scene. Also, pay your attention to how the image abrupts and the sign connection lost appears on the screen right at the moment when the door gets open. And it also kind of looks like the visual intro to the first Matrix movie to me, by the way. And it happens, of course, due to the fact that there's Skibidi Scientist inside speaking to the secret agent himself, and we know how covert he is, and that he doesn't allow anyone besides his own apprentices to be aware of his presence. That's why he shuts the opportunity for himself to be seen right at the moment when there is a risk for the inner part of the room to get exposed, so that no ordinary soldier of the Alliance would catch his face or silhouette. Then, the POV cameraman gets his eyes off the tablet and looks upwards, and we see one of the detachable TV screens belonging to Titan TV Man. And there's something else right underneath it. To me, it looks like some kind of debris that were left after the battle that was happening in this place just minutes ago. It is quite difficult for me to discern what that is for sure, but my guess is that it may probably be one of the upturned, destroyed helicopters of the Alliance, because I see something resemblant of a white metal core and helicopter blades on top of it. Then the camera moves to the right, and we can see this Skibidi soldier, which looks really similar to the one that we had been shown a very long time ago, in the first leak for the first part of Episode 70. At first, I thought that it is really this dude who must have really taken his time to finally show up to the very end of the party. But then I saw the slight difference in his rocket launchers, when I compared those two together. Although their appearance and toilet tanks may look almost identical, the rocket launchers on the sides are completely different, and the guy from today's episode doesn't seem to have any shields that the guy from the leak had. The Skibidi soldier releases one missile from these launchers, and it hits straight into the detachable TV screen breaking it. And that's how we figured out about the reason for this screen on the left TV man's soldier to be broken. Which proves once again, by the way, that the events of the current episode happen a little bit prior to the events of the third part of episode 70. And as we're observing the current events, right at this moment, Plungerman and the Dark Speakerman are in the middle of the unfair fight with Skibidi Scientist. And by the way, in this frame, we can see something similar to the fallen white ground satellite aerial and we saw one a few seconds before in this shot, behind the Skibidi soldier with rocket launchers. Titan TV Man attaches the damaged TV screen onto his left shoulder, and then he says a phrase that sounds something like, You're so funny dead. And then he gets accompanied by two of his buddies, and now we have a perfect opportunity to fully see them in this epic close-up. They don't seem to have changed since the last time we saw them in Episode 70. Titan Cameraman still has his right arm, aka Acid Gun, that he tore off one of the Skibidi he fought, and there's no signs in Titan TV Man's presence that his left hand, which was damaged by the sneaky Astro Toilet attack, affected him somehow. A couple of missiles from two giant air defense cannons have been fired at the trio, but they were ready to face it. Both Titan Speaker Man and Titan Cameraman release their own shots from their guns in order to prevent those missiles from hitting their marks and Titan TV Man does the giant epic swing with his purple sword, which seems to release a blast of wild energy destroying the missiles right at the moment they got into the area of affection. The missiles then get thrown in all the possible directions, and unfortunately for the POV, one of the directions was right the place he was standing in. 
There was no chance for him to survive, so we see the sad camera offline inscription once again. And then we get transported to another POV, who was also watching everything that happened from another tablet. And by the way, check out his outfit. This frame seems to be pretty dark, so I'm not entirely sure whether his suit is traditionally black or dark purple, but his shirt is definitely black. I'm sure that we didn't see such cameramen before, so I would be really curious to see him in action. He looks from the tablet, and we see some kind of small building that seems to be made out of wood, and it looks like some kind of hangar or shed, and we certainly didn't see it anywhere in episode 66 or 67. There are a couple of really violent explosions that could be seen in the distance, and I am not really sure what they may be referred to yet, because the fight between Skibidi scientists and two elite agents still seems to be happening underground. Then we can notice a bunch of new characters near this building, and how there are plenty of fallen toilets in the background, and also there is this lower part of some red and white colored airplane, and I have no idea what this is, and how it turned out to be here. And the first thing that grabbed my attention is, of course, this cool-looking cameraman with the minigun, who's similar to the one we saw in the leak that was published by Boom on the main page of his official store just a day before today's episode release. And it's not the only thing that came to us here from this leak. The area is the same as well, but we'll talk about the surroundings a little bit later. In my analysis of that leak, I noticed how weirdly this guy seemed to handle this huge gun. And in the image, it looked like that he's not even holding it with his left hand alone, but how that's rather an extraction of his own arm similar to Titan Cameraman's. And in this frame, it's still not exactly clear. But later in this episode, we could see another cameraman with the minigun, and he's looking as if he really has the minigun implemented into his body instead of a regular hand. Now let's move further. And man, look at this Lil Speakerman guy right next to the cameraman with plasma gun. He's dressed in the black suit and has the dark head speaker, which sprinkles some salt on my wound, because the tragic memories of the dark Speakerman agent are still fresh. He seems to be vibing to some really damn good song, and it looks like he got chained to the rhythm for real. Actually, he reminded me a lot of my beloved speaker woman during her very first appearance in episode 61, when she was dancing to the Running Up That Hill by Kate Bush. And wait, is this my competitor or something? Is he fighting for my woman's heart as well? Does he really think that he may be more relevant to her than I am, just because he's got good taste in music too? Oh hell no, I already despise him. And the third cameraman is equipped with the same kinds of upgrades that the guy with the minigun. I cannot see that from this particular angle, but it seems to me that this guy also has minigun in his hands, based on the way he holds it. So it may be apparent to me that the latest enhancements for the Alliance forces are just crazy. Even the ordinary soldiers seem to be well prepared for the final battle, so the Skibidi army won't take it lightly, I am sure of it. Another helicopter of the Alliance lands at this spot, and as we look to the left, we see two Alliance's medics who are busy with repairing this injured cameraman, and near another shed behind their backs, we can see a small crowd consisting of two ordinary, non-upgraded cameramen facing the one who's already equipped with the latest enhancements from the Alliance, and the big cameraman with the rocket launcher. Man, for a split second I thought whether he may be the repaired blue-shirted Chad who passed away in the elevator at the end of the second part of episode 68, but no, this seems to be a completely new character. By the way, take a look at this particular helicopter on the left. It's been equipped with two fat, heavy rocket launchers, while the majority of such helicopters seem to be here just for the transfer of the Alliance's soldiers. And just a second afterwards, another combat helicopter arrives into the shot. And next to it, we can notice this exact cameraman in the well-known surroundings from the fresh leak, and the device placed on the rock near him. And by the way, there's this little red thing that caught my attention, in the lower part of this frame. It looks like some kind of siren to me that was added here just for fun. And I saw it once again in here too. He looks at us and points at the ground with his finger. It seems like before that, he was sitting and listening to the sounds coming from underground. And then the whole earth starts shaking as the giant entrance gets opened. And we see how the long, huge cargo accompanied by two Skibidi toilets sitting on top of it with their cisterns back to back and serving the goal of being some sort of double-bladed helicopter. It flies to the air without getting any visible damage from the Alliance's soldiers' shots. But it doesn't even matter at this point, because a moment after, we see something truly terrifying. It's no other than G-Man in flesh, and it seems like he's not going to flee anywhere this time. He looks cold-blooded, coordinated, and mad as hell. 
It doesn't seem to me like something was actually changed or upgraded in him since we last saw in, in the third part of episode 67, though. I think he feels to be good enough for this battle even without any upgrades. So he smiles in a very eerie way and blasts his huge lasers. And their impact is so terrific that the POV gets thrown from his initial spot and it even looks like he got unconscious for a second. That's why his head camera switched off and glitched. And when we get woken up again, the environment around us seems to be turned into living hell. Everything's burning and blasting, and we see the body of our fallen comrades everywhere. By the way, do you see this skibidi toilet at the left corner of the screen? His saddened face being wrapped in some kind of wool cap and with purple earphones around his head reminded me of a DJ Skibidi from episode 6, who, as you remember, also triumphantly returned in the first part of episode 70 to just then become torn apart by the Astro toilet. And by the way, look at this scene where he gets punished by Astro. It's only his upgraded body that seems to be torn apart, while his head simply went to the flying journey without being visibly damaged. What if this guy is so upset because he needed to get into the boring, regular toilet tank once again? Oh man, I can understand your feelings pretty well. I mean, it kinda hurts to fall from the higher place, does it not? And a few seconds later, it looks like he's about to get done for good due to this massive explosion which occurs right next to him. So he'll either get finished on the spot or will get buried with heavy debris. But in this shot, we see that he's still alive and well, so I'm glad that he got more luck this time. And in the next scene, we see a bunch of crazy things happening at the same time. Firstly, we see the upgraded Skibidi mutant, who seems to be equipped with all freaking sorts of stuff. He's got sunglasses, earphones, laser gun, saw, and a jetpack. And in addition to it all, he seems to be pretty damn smart now. And his level of intelligence is apparently much higher than of any mutants we saw earlier in this series. Combined together, he finished off this poor cameraman with one precise laser blast, and then he slowly walks towards the proudly looking G-Man, gives him a quick look, and flies up to the air. And man, G-Man seems to give him a really sassy look in response. What are you cooking here, bro? Are you two like really close or something? But let's not go too deep into that and get back to other important details in that scene. But what's even crazier is that right in the moment this Skibidi mutant appears, there is no other than Astro Toilet who's showing up, and next to him, there is the Skibidi Welder, who we lastly saw in the second part of episode 68. And we could also see him in the secret scene next to G-Man, that was shown to the infiltration squad from the Lucky Cameraman's tablet. And did you notice how Astro Toilet just flied over G-Man's head without any troubles? That looked really strange to me, because based on both Astro Toilet from the first part of episode 70, and the secret agent have said, I had a strong feeling that Astro and Skibidi Toilets are bitter enemies now. So, I have two theories explaining that scene. The first one is that Astro Toilets and G-Man specifically are cooperating against the Alliance now. But it doesn't really sit right with me, because it can only be possible in the case that all this feud against them was staged. And in reality, their fractions were still helping one another. But then why would Astro Toilet destroy one of Skibidi at the end of the first part of Episode 70? That's why I have another theory as well. We know that Astro Toilets are capable of flying with crazy ultrasonic speed. So what if G-Man simply didn't notice his grand enemy as he was busy flirting with this Skibidi mutant? If this is the case, then, well, you messed up really bad, buddy. You may be intimidating and all that, but you're still hella dump as a pile of bricks. Then, as the scene clears up, G-Man looks straight to our soul, smiles menacingly, and fries the POV up with his terrifying laser blasts. But somehow, the POV manages to survive as his camera keeps working, but he gets buried under a huge pile of debris while watching how G-Man flies away. And seconds before he's about to shut down, we see Astro Toilet once again, lurking around the battlefield. And I have a crazy theory about why he does that. What if he's searching for bodies of seemingly fallen cameramen who are still awake in order to retract the recordings from their cameras with everything that happened before their destruction? And that's why G-Man tries to destroy all the cameramen he sees around. What if he wants to prevent Astro Toilets from getting any significant information that could have helped their fraction in this war? But there's something which confuses me a bit, if I am to follow this theory. If Astro Toilet searches for the cameramen who are still alive, then why he took a glimpse at the POV and then simply flew away? I have only one explanation of it. Maybe it looked to Astro Toilet that this cameraman was also about to pass away. 
so he was not worthy of messing with him and spending excessive time on. Or maybe these last shots we saw was not from the whole POV, but from his head camera only, that could have been detached from his body after explosion and thrown away. Write your own theories about the Astro Toilet's motifs, because I will be really interested in reading your guy's opinion. And that was all for today. So be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss my new analyses. And that was me, Isotoilet. See ya!